Welcome you here to the 98th anniversary of the Battle of the Somme. This evening we are also opening a mural remembering the events of the Home Rule Crisis from 1912 to 1914. From the Balmoral Review in April 1912, where the largest Union flag in the world was unfurled in front of a crowd of over 120,000 people to protest against the imposition of Home Rule, or as it was known then, Rome Rule to the worldwide signing of the Covenant on the 28th of September 1912, now known as Ulster Day, when Lord Carson led tens of thousands to the City Hall to confirm their opposition to Home Rule. Some men even signed in their own blood. The signing of the Covenant was a prerequisite to joining the Ulster Volunteer Force. In 1913, there was a call sent out throughout the land for 100,000 men along with women auxiliaries and nurses to join the Ulster Volunteer Force to resist by force if necessary the introduction of Home Rule. Craigavon House in the east and Farnhill House in the west of Belfast in 1913 saw the mobilisation of lords, lawyers, captains of industry and the working men of the shipyard, Mackey's, the mills and the rope works, united in their opposition to the third Home Rule Bill. But if there were to be armed resistance, then there had to be guns. So Major Fred Crawford and Shango Rope pawnbroker RJ Adji met the German Jewish gun dealer Benny Spiro in Hamburg 
and commenced Operation Land, which resulted in the Lorne and Donaghy gun running, where thousands of rifles and millions of rounds of ammunition were brought into Ulster on the 23rd and the 24th of April 1914. Volunteers sailed off both Lorne and Donaghy to unload and secure the weapons to resist Dublin rule. But little did these men know that two years later they would be part of the British Ar Army as part of the 36th Ulster Division getting ready to go over the top at the Battle of the Somme. I would now like to call forward Reverend Captain Edith Query to dedicate the mural. Ulster's record in the Great War is one of which her people have every reason to be proud. The following is the record of decorations won by officers, NCOs and men of the Ulster Division for gallantry in the field between October 1915 and November 1918. Victoria Cross, 9. Distinguished Service Order, 71. Military Cross, 459. Distinguished Conduct Medal, 173. Military Medal, 1,294. Meritorious Service Medal, 118. Foreign Medals, 312. Hundreds more were mentioned in dispatches. Edward Carson spoke these words when the war ended. Welcome home Ulster men, on sea, on land, and in the air you have fought for your king and country, and you have helped to secure the freedom of the world. Let us not, in this hour of victory, forget those of your comrades who have made the supreme sacrifice. Ulster mourns them, but is proud of the glory and honour they have won for the Imperial Province. Tonight, with great honour, we dedicate this mural to the brave men and women of Ulster, who went before us in recognition of their courage and bravery. Every time we pass by here, we should be reminded of what our history means to us and the sacrifice paid. I would like to call forward the Honorary President of the West Belfast Athletic and Cultural Society, Mr. Samuel Austin, to cut the ribbon.
On this day, 98 years ago, the men of the 36th Ulster Division emerged from their trenches and went towards the German lines. Not like the rest of the British Army in line of Brest, but in rushes like they had been taught when they had trained as the Ulster Volunteer Force. Despite even this training, the 36th Ulster Division suffered over 5,000 casualties. Indeed, it was the bloodiest day ever for the British Army, with over 50,000 men killed, missing or wounded. On this 1st of July, with the 100th anniversary of the start of the First World War on August the 4th, we should remember the brave Ulster men who have been preparing to oppose Home Rule and then answered the Empire's call in 1914 to go to foreign fields and die for king and country and also for God and Ulster. I would now like to say a few lines from the poem. They mingle not with their laughing comrades again. They sit no more at familiar tables of home. They have no lot in our labour of the daytime. They sleep beyond Ulster's foam. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the near years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
I would like to now call the Reverend, the Reverend Captain Edith Query to lead us in a prayer. Let us pray. God our Heavenly Father, we ask that you help us to always remember and honour the sacrifice of so many and grant that as we continue to live our lives day by day, we do so guided by our faith and for the glory of Christ our Saviour. Amen.